I mean, basically, we're 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 seeing a lot here. Obviously, there's a issue of policing, and an issue of policing in uh, poor communities, an issue of policing uh, in terms of racism, in terms of uh, lethality and murder, in terms of actually the uh, killology which is one of the uh, training schools uh, that some police have been through, many police have been through. Um, and this wave of murders uh, culminating in George Floyd, right? We have what we know is not a democracy. There's no democratic accountability for policing in communities of color, in poor communities, in a vast set, uh, you know, just the amount of lethal force that police use in the United States is abnormal, stunning, sickening, terrifying, and anti-democratic. We've seen over the last week that a lot of local politicians clearly do not have control over their police departments. Bill de Blasio in New York is pathetic and obsequious to the police, but we're also talking about people who, at least some of whom doxed his daughter while she was protesting. Uh, and he still has not condemned in spite of endless examples of brutality, including driving through the crowd and Flatbush, which he actually justified. So, and, and now what we're seeing, and I think what we particularly saw last night and we'll play a couple of clips. We've been seeing all along, but it was very accelerated last night uh, because now they're going after and you know just beating people essentially at random. Um, it's footage from then, uh, uh, Denver of a car being stopped. Guy saying, hey, I'm just trying to get home. They shoot rubber bullets at him and his pregnant uh, wife. Not even protesting. Not even protesting, literally just going about their business. Says, hey, stop. They fire rubber bullets at them. And in these clips that we're about to see in New York, this is a collective punishment for talking, for protesting about these issues, not talking about these issues. This is a collective punishment. So these are some scenes. Let's play clips one and two. This is first some footage compiled by, I guess both of these are compiled by uh, Josh Fox, yeah? Uh, of some of the just endless things that happened in New York last night. I also recommend people should, uh, Jamani Williams, the New York public advocate, if you look at his Twitter feed, he was out as a high ranking Jumaane city. Responding to that too. Sorry? We have Jamani talking to the press after during last night as well. Why don't we play that? Let's yeah. play these two pieces of brutality and then let's play Jamani uh, respond. And the reasons really to underline is that, you know, Again, they feel so comfortable. In the first couple of days, they actually mace the they they uh, you know pepper sprayed a state senator and a city councilwoman. They didn't touch the public advocate, but they did this all in front of him, even as he was documenting it in real time on social media. We don't have sound, by the way. Bro. Oh, okay. Right. I thought there was sound for this. Sorry. So basically, this first clip is a guy who's biking home. Uh, I don't know the context, but he appears to just be crossing an intersection. Uh, you know, some people, there's obviously a lot of people defying the curfew to nonviolently protest because the curfew is a major dangerous 8, encroachment. On 8 p.m. Liberties. in New York City. Yeah, 8 p.m. in New York City. Those are just a lot of people doing work. Um, regardless, it's, it's authoritarian and insane. So this guy just is biking. They go up on him, start oh smacking him with a billy club. Oh my God. And pull him off the bike, start beating him. You can hear that. Oh my God. Uh, from yeah. the woman in the car. You know, Matt Iglesias had this piece that where he's like, technocratically, if Trump waited until after the curfew, he he could have gassed them more, you know, um, with more impunity, right? And that might be true. Like people might accept that 
breaking curfew can trigger a police response up to a point maybe but if this curfew has to extend for a long time and people are just getting beaten for being outside that's not going to age well for the cops like and, and i think part of their brutality is because they're like they're having to call every there's no t- days off guys working long shifts 12 hour right. shifts oh, yeah, no days exhausted. off now yeah this is the, the police forces are exhausted so especially the nypd they want to end this shit now yep uh and so that's what they're trying to scare people from going out and yeah like this is part of it too right they i I, i'm convinced that part of the reason they're uh comfortable doing this is because they don't mind these images of people getting beaten just for being outside because they want to scare people from being outside absolutely no this this is as much a pr i mean it's it they're they're not in the we're actually cuddly phase of the pr tactic now it's the we don't respect basic tenets of a democracy we'll beat the shit out of you uh in la I mean, in L.A. Sorry, Brendan, go ahead. The SBA letter uh, about winning the war in New York. No. Yeah. I'll pull pull this up. Psycho. I mean, the Sergeant Benevolence Association is a complete psycho fascist organization. Just come like and have been for. And in and in L.A., I mean, you had a a major a senior police official say, look, you know, these curfews going to last as long as protests are happening. So that is a public omission that you're getting rid of the first amendment. You're attempting to get rid of the first amendment. Mm -hmm. And again, let's just be really, you know, let's just, let's just be clear about the tactics and what's happening here. A vast majority of people that are doing this are protesting nonviolently. They could be defying a curfew. They could be holding up traffic. That is exactly in the tradition that everybody likes to valorize until it actually happens. The other stuff, just talking about tactically, is minuscule relative to people not protesting by, say, throwing a brick at a window. And we have seen numerous reports, numerous reports of police allowing some degree of vandalism and looting to happen and then charging at a broadly democratically participating crowd. In addition to other bizarre pieces of, and I feel less comfortable, I've seen anecdotes of this. The first one I've seen enough to to say pretty comfortably, but I've seen enough to at least put in the air that sometimes, you know, I wonder why there's footage of guys in SWAT gear breaking a CVS window in different places. It looks odd to me. We knew, And I've seen that several times. We know police forces lie and we know they plant evidence. What would they do if they thought they were at war against people? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we had that, uh, what was it, Rolex? that They said, you know, hey, they went in, they stole $2 million worth of Rolex watches, these looters. And Rolex was like, we didn't have anything on display. <laughs> like, um, you guys have this uh, letter? One moment. Okay, so it's just very important to understand that this is this is now starting from the top with Trump. This is all about a full chilling effect and anti-democratic movement. Period. That's it. That's the bottom line. And whatever else, I mean, you know, there there's and and critique and analysis and everything is important. If they succeed at this, this is a chilling effect on any type of constructive action you ever want. Mm -hmm. Labor action. um, You know, ensuring a clean election. You name it. They're policing ideology. And now they're quite literally, I mean, in front of everybody, like, don't let anybody kind of like over hype you with like, well, technically, you know, you can protest during the day and sure. blah, 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 blah. They are taking actions to, 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 to undermine democracy and substance. And that's what all of this goes back to that. There is not democratic accountability in the police department to begin with. That's what this all goes back to. This is going to be democratized or not. Dear fellow sergeants, when was this released? 
This was like over the weekend, I think. Yeah, right. 31st, I think. Yeah. Dear fellow sergeant, I'm being inundated with calls, text messages, and pleading for help. Please know that I'm reading each and every correspondence I receive. I want each of you to know that I'm very much aware of everything that's occurring in our city. I know we're losing our city. We have no leadership, no direction, no plan. I know we're being held back and used as pawns. I understand. I'm one of you. I am doing and will continue to do everything I can to protect the people of the city. So I'm asking you to please stay together and stay strong. Hold the line. Protect each other. Stand shoulder to shoulder. Do not give up. Never give up. I hear you. I am aware. And soon everyone's going to hear you. Help is coming. We will win the war in New York City. Remember, your work for a higher, uh, you work for a higher authority. It's good against, it's good against evil and good always wins. Yep. Okay, this is fucking demented. And I, and, and this is not like, look, police want to come out and say, hey, we're tired. Hey, we're trying, like, we have a job to do, you know, like, <laughs> fine. Those are absolutely valid sentiments for them to express. You have people who have, basically zero legal account, essentially immunity, do whatever they want with all types of gadgets and gear. And they think they're fighting good versus evil because people are out protesting some of their brethren murdering somebody. That's a psycho and dangerous mindset. And it's, and it's very interesting because everybody is approvingly quoting general Mattis saying the United States is not a battlefield. I'd like to add uh, Fallujah shouldn't have been a battlefield anyways, but I won't get lost in that. But everybody's saying, finally, General Mattis has come forward and correctly attacked Donald Trump uh, for being a narcissistic dullard that's assaulting the Constitution. All that's true. Why is it acceptable that we have people who represent an empowered paramilitary force that could have such an insane mindset. I mean, th th this also co calls for when you talk about questions of training, you need, you need to, to, to measure like, are you reading ridiculous conspiracy theory websites? Are you like, <laughs> what is going in your head? If, if we can applaud the general for telling the president that the United States is not a battlefield, then every elected official in the country needs to tell these police associations that their cities are not a battlefield and people protesting and demanding basic democracy and civil rights and accountability are not evil. 